Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll discuss Cayenne simulation in Genesis. We'll set up a basic transient simulation. We'll use a pulse modulated RF source. And we'll compare input and output. We'll show you how to generate a pulsed RF spectrum using the FFT. And we'll show you how we use Cayenne in a filter response measurement, as well as using Cayenne for oscillator startup. We start with a simple example using an NPN SPICE device that you see here, along with uh, a bias structure of 1,000 ohms and a coupling capacitor of 100 picofarads. And now we're going to select from the linear parts group a power supply, an ideal voltage source, and we'll drag that and connect it. And we'll double click to get the properties page, and we'll set that to 10 volts. And next, we're going to add a port, an input port. In this case, it's, since it's not a linear simulation, we're going to add a power port, AC power port in this case, and then drag it on, double click it. And here you see the property is a little different than linear components. We can uh, set the DC offset voltage, we can set the frequency, as well as the power, in this case, 0 dBm. So I'll close this, and then we're just about ready for a simulation. Let's add an output port of 50 ohms. I'll press the O key and then drag that on here. Let's close out the toolbars and set up our simulation. From the workspace tree, we select analysis, then transient analysis. That brings up the properties dialog. And here we have the name. We can uh, change the design we're going to simulate to. Uh, we can rename our data set or add a description. We can also set the, uh, the simulation time, in this case, 1,000 nanoseconds, and the output resolution of 1 nanosecond. And uh, we can set the tolerances if we wish. Uh, we always also use DC bias, uh, in this case, before simulation begins. Automatic recalculation. We'll set the temperature for a nominal 16.85. And uh, as I said, we can uh, manipulate or set the tolerances. The integration time um, and time step is settable also. Our method, both trapezoidal or gear. Uh, the predictor is either gear or automatic or even trapezoidal. And uh, we can use the predictor or not, depending on our circuitry. The uh, time step method is usually controlled by the truncation area, era, but we can set that to fixed if we wish. Convolution is how we deal with uh, parameters or structures that are frequency dependent. So impulse response are, are performed on things like transmission lines, and this is data that controls that, as well as the accuracy. And finally, in the output uh, miscellaneous. We can start our simulation or display it not at zero time, but at some other time if we wish. We can save all the port voltages, uh, the number of iterations. I invite you to use help in order to get further information uh, and details about these various settings. OK, we're about ready to simulate. And we've just started a simulation automatically. And it only takes a few seconds, as you see. Let's now look at the port voltages. I'll right click on the output port and select graph. And here we have the time plot. I'll tile our screens here. And here we can see how the uh, output voltage varies with time. Notice that its magnitude and so forth change uh, as a function of time and are not uh, continuous. And this is where transient analysis really helps. I'm using the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of our graph, as you see here. Here we have an example of a completed RF amplifier. It consists of a device and bias network, as well as an output matching network, and an input matching network of C2L3. In addition, we have a modulated pulsed RF source. We access that through the part selector that you see here, uh, under the basic category in the Eagle Air library. And here are the various uh, modulated sources, both for voltage and current. If we look at the properties of our source, you can see the start and step voltage values, as well as the time delay for turn on, the rise time, the pulse width, fall time, the uh, modulation frequency of 10 megahertz, and a carrier of 300 megahertz. In addition, we've set the, the AM modulation index to 1, which represents 100% modulation. All right, we'll close this off. 
And then I've already set up a transient simulation that you see here on the upper left, but we would initiate that the same as we did in the previous section. Well, here you need to see the name transient. And we're, our design that we're going to simulate is the schematic design. Our stop time is 400 nanoseconds. Step size is 0.4 nanoseconds, which gives us 1,000 points. We've left all the rest of the uh, settings to their default values. As you see here. Okay, we press OK, and the simulation begins. And it takes just a few seconds to do this pulse simulation. And we will go to the output port, right click, and then display a new graph. Uh, in this case, I've already preset the, uh, the graph for viewing. And we'll just tile these. And here you see the output pulse. You notice that it is not uniform, that there is a startup sequence and the pulse changes shape with time. I've also pre-selected V12, which happens to be the input port. And I'll display that too at the same time. So here we can see the ratio of input and output pulse. Um, because of the resolution of 0.4 nanoseconds, we probably need um, a smaller time set step if we wanted to see a finer resolution. Okay, in addition, we can also view the spectral output uh, from our source, or, or from our amplifier, and we do that via the equations uh, uh, box. Here we've uh, done an FFT, and I would invite you to view the help file in order to determine how to write the FFT, but it's very simple and straightforward and provides you uh, frequency information. Here's another example where we can apply transient analysis to our designs, and that is for filters. Here we have a passive filter with 20% bandwidth, that is 270 to 330 megahertz, and we're going to compare that to the results of a distributed filter, uh, which has a narrower bandwidth, 6% bandwidth from 290 to 310. So that's a you know, 20 megahertz bandwidth. We would suspect that our 10 megahertz signal would be able to pass through easily. So we're going to compare the effect of both the bandwidth and the type of filters in a transient simulation. Our transient simulation, as before, uh, with 400 nanoseconds uh, time, stop time, we've increased our resolution to 0.1 nanoseconds. And uh, the rest of the uh, settings are at their default values. We perform a uh, transient simulation, and I've already performed that. Now let's look at the, the output. Actually, this is the input pulse that we see at our source, and it's very clean and very fast rise time of one nanosecond and so forth. But uh, let's look at the output from our passive filter. And you see that the, the output is delayed to some extent. It has a much longer rise time, and there's some ringing uh, both within the pulse as well as after the pulse. So there's some distortion and uh, amplitude degradation as we go through this uh, filter. Now, let's look at the, I'm going to double click on the graph, and let's look at the, uh, the output from our distributed filter. And here you notice uh, uh, more distortion, more delay. The pulse shape has, uh, has changed considerably. There is also a considerable ringing after the pulse, which could lend to inter symbol interference if we were to use this particular filter for our design with this uh, pulse shape. So, uh, this uh, technique is very useful for, uh, for determining that for our filters. And here you can see the overlay of all three pulses, both the input, um, the output from our distributed filter, as well as from our passive filter. An invaluable tool here for determining filter response. Our final example illustrates uh, the use of transient simulation, or Cayenne, in the development of oscillators and their startup characteristics. And here you see the startup characteristics of this particular oscillator until it reaches steady state. Uh, primary differences uh, in the transient analysis is that we, uh, we help push the startup using the help oscillator start checkbox. And this just uh, and it provides stimulus to make sure that our oscillator does start up in a closed loop fashion as we have here. So anyway, in the last few minutes, I hope we've shown you how helpful uh, Cayenne Transit Simulator can be uh, to analyzing and solving your design issues and problems. I thank you for watching.